2015. Let's just uh, wait a few minutes before we get started, wait for everyone to get on the call. But if this is where you want to be, you're here. Too bad we don't have any music in the background. I, I guess I could sing, but uh, that would probably scare people away. We'll get started here in another minute or so. We should have a great turnout today based on uh, the registration and the topic around OMI and the presenters. So it should be a good call. <coughs> You're on the APM Practitioner Forum call. We'll be getting started shortly. We should be going through commercials from our sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> so another, you by. another revenue opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> you know, always thinking. <laughs> Again, you're on the APM Practitioner Forum call for September. We'll be getting started shortly. And we gave everybody a break over the summer, so we didn't have many calls. So it looks like uh, we had enough pent-up demand. People wanted to be on, on these calls to learn about what's happening with HP. And, and hopefully we have some great questions. We've got a great group of folks that can answer your questions. So anything related to the uh, OMI component in that space, start thinking of questions you want to ask for our Q&A section. And uh, we'll get started there. So let's see, what time do we have? Well, I think we should get started. I have uh, 11.08 Eastern Standard Time, and uh, we've got a lot to cover, so we'll get started. And so, again, welcome to the uh, APM Practitioner Forum call for September. Uh, my name is Rocky Pisto. I'm part of the BSM SIG leader team of Jim Copio, Mark Laird, Sandy Schubert, and we are all SIG leaders for the BSM SIG which uh, comprises of about 6,000 members worldwide. So thank you for uh, being on the call today. Uh, if you have any questions beyond this call or would like to hear about topics relevant to your situation, send us a note, and we'll try to make that happen on the next call. This is a live session, and it's being recorded. Uh, recordings are available to all Vivid members. It'll show up in the BSM SIG uh, landing page uh, as a recorded session, and all our sessions are recorded there. So uh, this is kind of an open call session once we get past our presenters today. And so there's a place where you can leave your questions in the question panel. And here's an example of that. So tog there's a toggle view for the window between full screen and window mode. And you can type in your questions in the my SIG leader, Mark Laird, will take those questions and uh, ask them of HP. So just uh, just a little intro. If you've not been on one of these calls before, we've taken over the APM practitioner call from HP back in uh, January, December time frame. Vivid is your independent HP software group which is a great place for this. We used to be the OpenView forum, so for all you OpenView customers, uh, We've been around for 20 some years now, 22 years. And, uh, and we've grown to 30,000 members worldwide with 81 local chapters around the world. And our speakers today are, are HP's Ian Brohead, who will uh, kind of moderate uh, their team of speakers and uh, we'll go from there. So 
Uh, let's see. The agenda, what's new with OMI version 10 and the evolution program. Uh, anyone that needs a copy of that, please send me a note. I have it for you. I can send you the whole program, and uh, we'll let them uh, take it from there. So, Ian, it's all yours. Well, thank you. Thanks, Rocky. <clears throat> can you hear me okay? Yes. Yep. Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone, and thanks for your time uh, today and joining this webinar. We're going to talk a little bit about um, what is the current offering from HP, uh, which we call Operations Bridge, actually, which uh, for which the core uh, product is, of course, uh, IMI. And um, I think it's, it's worth just kicking off, making sure everyone's got uh, a common understanding of what we mean by Operations Bridge and some of the features which are in the, today's uh, product version of OMI and how uh, how we think that helps customers to solve issues. So just a few slides here to make sure that we're all on uh, a level, level playing field. What's new with Ops Bridge? Um, the Operations Bridge, uh, hopefully most people would understand what we mean by Ops Bridge or Operations Bridge to be exact. It, it isn't a HP term actually, it's a term that comes from ITSM and it actually means a physical location where uh, all information and resources come together for the purpose of uh, solving uh, issues with uh, IT operations. Um, we've used that term to define the solution which, uh, which IMI is pivotal uh, in delivering to customers. Um, Ian Brownhead, that's me. Uh, I'm in product marketing. My focus is the operations bridge. And I'm joined today uh, by two of my esteemed colleagues, uh, ladies first, Carol Park, who's a subject matter expert, in particular on OMI, but it's, uh, on the Opsbridge solution too, and Volker Gartner, who's part of the R&D team, uh, who is also a specialist and leads our team of ambassadors across the world concerning the implementation of Opsbridge solutions and OMI. So, so welcome to my uh, my colleagues. Hopefully, we should have a well, one of our customers, Jay Rooney. Uh, from uh, Van City, uh, who has implemented OMI version 10. Uh, I'm not seeing in the name list here, so I'm not sure if he's joined us yet. So when we come to his section, if he hasn't joined, then uh, we'll, uh, we'll skip on to the uh, interactive discussion. Okay, so let's, uh, let's have a look at what's new with Opsbridge and go to the next slide, please. Okay, so um, some of these slides are taken from uh, the, the standard presentation. That's one slide too far. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and basically what we're showing here, let me get to the, the correct slide. Okay, thank you. Uh, is that um, in actual fact when we look at the state of many um, IT operations teams um, and if we also look at some of the evidence of that state that uh, subject matter experts, people like analysts and what have you are, are communicating, then it's pretty clear that IT is going through a lot of pressures to transform. And, and what we show in this slide really is that uh, in, in many instances we still see a lot of IT teams operating as a cost function. Uh, and as businesses you know, want to be more agile, bringing out, <coughs> excuse me, bringing out more and more agile applications to suit their business needs, then uh, IT really does need to reposition itself and transform itself to be, to be a better strategic partner. And, and some of the things that are shown a little bit in this slide are that if you're a cost function, that probably means that you're spending a lot of time in war rooms you're probably not using extensively automation to to reduce uh, human effort uh, and uh, that you have a, a difficulty communicating IT's value and showing IT's value to a business partner. The, the kind of ideal situation as a strategic partner would be that automation is extensively used for, uh, for IT operations, remedial actions, but also uh, well, we are able to add to the current landscape of IT management tools, such things as analytics, 
uh, to be able to help to analyze the situation so much more faster than human capabilities would ever be able to do, given the kind of big data uh, uh, problem that we have today, where there's so many different resources in the IT landscape that are generating information. Uh, big data now gives us the opportunity to go and use that data to try and find where issues lie, uh, where trends are showing us that things are happening, and even become proactive and predictive. So, so some of the ideas uh, that we believe help people to move from left to right on this kind of screen are uh, aspects of an analytics-driven operations solution, where analytics is applied to as many things as we can, and we use the power of big data uh, to help us do that. But not just that, it's also the, the aspects of being able to discover what, what is the IT landscape and make sure we've got an accurate picture of what is influencing what, right? So which, which humblest network port is capable of, in, of influencing uh, the most uh, business critical application. We need to have that discovery, we need it to be up to date as, as much as we can. We need to be able to monitor and we need to make sure that monitoring is activated in as much as possible whenever change occurs. And of course change is one of those constants. Everything's changing, uh, whether it be configurations of what's out there already or whether it's new instances of things. Uh, be they IT landscape resources in your own environment or be they services which you're subscribing to uh, through a, a private or a hybrid cloud. But monitoring needs to be automated as much as we can as well. From a compliance perspective, this is a growing requirement too, to make sure that we know what we are monitoring and to make sure we know how we're monitoring. And then of course remediation. Uh, IT resources are not always available to be able to take corrective action. So whenever and wherever it's feasible to be able to define uh, automated remedial actions, we should be trying to do that uh, because it will reduce uh, the aspects of, uh, of uh, power outage, of outages and of downtime. So let's have a look, go to the next slide please, and have a look at uh, normally what are some of the benefits that, that people are deriving by applying these aspects. And we've shown some of them here. Uh, I think there's one missing on the left. Maybe it's an animation. There we go. So, so when you can discover and you can have an accurate picture, when you can automate monitoring and when you can use remediation with improved aspects of analytics that we'll talk about, then people are uh, today able to reduce the number of, uh, of events which they're having to deal with, with uh, events coming from, uh, uh, from what's being monitored by as much as 75 to 80 percent. We have several customers who've been able to do that by implementing OMI in the Oxbridge. People are taking cost out of their operations as much as 1.2 million. Uh, we have several customers uh, who are measuring a really enormous reduction uh, of operations costs by using automation, uh, by making sure they're focused on the right issues, and by being able to look at the issues which are impacting the business and focus on them. Uh, and then when you use analytics to be able to do this kind of operation, we're also seeing that people can do triage, find the root cause, just so much faster than was feasible previously. That's the power of applying analytics to the operations. So how do we do some of those things? Let's go to the next slide. So we believe that um, by applying such things as big data driven analytics, multi-mode correlation, automated log and event and metrics uh, analysis, even predictive analysis, and having the means to have very clear uh, visibility through uh, KPI over time is one example we'll see later on, but also if we can use a time machine window to say, okay, so we know where we are now, we've got a situation, but let's wind back over time to see how do we get to that situation. Previously, that was a, uh, an exercise which would have been executed many times in war rooms, uh, now by, um, by creating an, an analytics-driven analytics solution, we can offer that uh, in a real-time perspective with a very powerful visual um, output. Fast and accurate continuous discovery I mentioned already. Monitoring with business-focused triage so that when we do find root cause, we can uh, accurately make sure that we uh, look at what's impacting the business. Um, and that's a strong uh, value proposition of OMI. Uh, but also being able to do that across the millions of objects. Scalability is something we've heard, we've uh, worked hard on. Um, scalability from the perspective of the number of things that you have to manage and that are important to be able to build a picture end to end and top to bottom of what's happening. Uh, and across a, a vastly expanding 
uh, landscape of application types, middleware types, uh, and we're supporting more and more of those. Uh, and uh, obviously, to a large extent, making sure that uh, customers who've invested already in existing tools, we're not suggesting that it's necessary to throw those away at all. Um, the data that they bring to bear, uh, often as best of breed tools, uh, is a partial picture of what's happening end to end and top to bottom. So we integrate that into our uh, solution uh, called Operations Bridge. And then remediation, right? So we need, we propose that people need to uh, be able to do remediation. Uh, which might be a simple script, but it also might be a complicated and involved conditional flow uh, of a runbook. Uh, and I'm happy to say that in our solution, then we can offer uh, several thousand runbooks out of a library, which uh, is extremely valuable. So if we, let's move on to the next slide. Here you can see uh, just a couple of things, uh, hopefully in, in this uh, slide deck on the left-hand side. The one I'm showing at the top is the KPI over time. That's a new capability that's in uh, OMI 10 as part of the Oxbridge solution. It's very nice because, in fact, what it does is allow you to see in a grid format uh, which parts of a business service or an IT service or simply an application, which parts are exhibiting issues over time and probably need operator and specialist attention. Uh, we're also seeing some aspects of uh, overall health of the service itself being ag aggregated and shown in bar chart format in a graphical format as well. And this can be conditioned, of course, according to the responsibilities of the person who's looking at it. So it's a very good way where the, for the first time OMI is getting as a scope of, uh, of trend analysis, if you wish, uh, for our big uh, business and IT services. The one you see at the bottom is uh, actually in the operations bridge solution. We couple operations uh, bridge OMI with operations analytics, where we see, in fact, that we can exchange data uh, and context between uh, between our um, operator consoles and our operator analytics consoles. So the purpose of doing what? Well, the purpose of saying that you know, can't monitor everything. That can be expensive for people. But in any case, there are so many different device types and the technologies that they invoke that it becomes extremely hard these days to monitor everything. So one of the things that you can do, of course, is to collect um, log information uh, as well as events and metrics and then mine that. And that's precisely what we do with our big data analytics solution. Coupled with IMI, this means that we have the capability of, as I said, winding backwards and forwards, but also automating how do we find pertinent information in millions of log files in literally seconds and then point to the most pertinent few log files which are likely to be helping us to understand understand uh, what's uh, happening in the uh, in the IT landscape. And as I mentioned, we, you know, we're supporting from OMI more and more uh, different types of domains, whether those be cloud domains such as EC2, Microsoft Azure, or whether they be those application domains that developers will be choosing all the time. There's more and more of them. We can think of Python, we can think of MongoDB, we can think of Docker as being very important application domains uh, for modern IT architectures. They all need to be supported if we're going to be able to see what is impacting the business and focus on the right thing. So let's have a look at the next slide. Can we go to the next slide, please? Okay, so one of the things that probably most of you will, will understand, uh, it looks like it's an animated slide, if you just uh, build the next sets of animation, thank you. Uh, this is just pointing to the capabilities that we have of providing the analytics-driven paradigm to IT operations. At the top right, you can see this is what we were talking about in terms of multi-mode correlation techniques, which allow us to take multiple events uh, and then see which ones of those are actually symptoms and which one is really the root cause. And if we find that there's more than one root cause, then of course we need to look at which one of those root causes is having the most business impact. Then the other parts of analytics uh, are uh, the aspects of, uh, as I mentioned, this automated capability to constantly look at log entries, millions of them, and then find uh, elements of log entries which interest us, which are linked to uh, some of the IT events which are happening right now, but for which we don't have a lot of information and we can't easily find the root cause. Analyzing the logs is something that people would have been doing over the years, 
opening a telnet session or, or using something of that nature to go and have a look on a target machine. It's a very uh, lengthy exercise. Uh, automation brings us the means to be able to do that for log entries, but also now for events as well, uh, automating the analysis to show us which is the most pertinent set of activities which are occurring around the time when we know we've got issues. And predictive, our analytics capabilities are capable of learning the seasonal behavior of metrics, uh, metrics which are either measured by our OMI monitoring systems or metrics taken out of a log text entry, which we can do now as well. And so the predictive aspects uh, are obviously very interesting in the sense that we can try and give operators an upfront indication of something which doesn't look quite normal, an anomaly per se, and feed that event into OMI so we can drill down and eventually take action. Let's move on to the next slide. What I'm describing for, uh, to you here is the uh, real-time event correlation. You're looking at the latest dashboards of an operator's console in IMI 10 on the left. And we can isolate the signal in the noise by integrating uh, this animated site as well so that you can just complete the animation on the screen. Then we'll see that we can use information from OMI fed to uh, our analytics engine and then interchange information between those two capabilities so that we can drill down and find things faster. Can you complete the animation on the slide, please? So there you see, in fact, something which our own IT is using internally. Our own IT is using uh, OMI to manage upwards of uh, 70,000 servers across uh, HP, which is quite an extensive, extensive installation and uh, uses the real-time event correlation to be able to isolate particular signals. But in those rare occasions when there are issues, they don't have enough information to understand how they got to where they are. And the transfer of context between OMI and the analytics context on the right-hand side uh, helps with them to be able to understand uh, what uh, log entries and event, event entries correlate and find issues uh, faster. So this is the new operations bridge definition where we couple uh, the capabilities of OMI with operations analytics. Okay, let's move on. Uh, this is just a, a confirmation of what I was saying earlier that the event met, the event uh, information from uh, OMI can be loaded into the analytics engine as well as logs, and of course the automation that's in uh, the uh, big data and analytics helps us to identify. Uh, the few messages out of the millions of messages which are likely to be uh, giving us pertinent visibility of what's happening. Let's move on. And this is just a, a couple of, of uh, screenshots showing you the automated baseline generation, the seasonal learning uh, of our analytics engine, which can then raise alerts uh, into OMI and then help us to execute remedial action. Let's move on to the next slide. Uh, which is talking about remediation. So our operations bridge uh, solution uh, is coupling OO, operations orchestration, with those 5,000 room books directly with OMI. So when we, uh, when we have particular uh, cases which are identified uh, in uh, OMI, we can either set up a situation where the remediation is executed automatically, uh, and that could be things concerning linkages to the service desk to open particular tickets, execute remedial action, and if it succeeds, close the ticket. Uh, as a particular solution that we call the closed loop incident process or detect to correct. Uh, but also, of course, helping an operator uh, to execute remedial actions that have been proven before uh, based on his own judgment of, uh, of what that MI is showing uh, to him. So let's move on to the next slide. And uh, this is showing you something new, which uh, was introduced in HP Discover Las Vegas, uh, which we're very excited about. Uh, it's still in beta for the moment as a SaaS solution. Um, we uh, hope to be able to release this as an on-premise version at HP Discover in London. It's called the Business Library Dashboard, and it was born from the requirement to help IT operations show more clearly uh, on an ongoing basis uh, how it's impacting the business. It's a simple uh, a way of putting IT metrics, IT status, and business metrics into a real-time dashboard. A dashboard is designed using Microsoft Visier, 
Um, so anyone can do the kind of uh, dashboard that you see here on the next couple of slides very quickly and very easily. They can be modified practically on the fly. And then, of course, the information concerning IT metrics, IT status, is piped to the business value dashboard, which is simply a presentation layer. It's very colorful, it's very flexible. You can do what you want. Uh, this particular example here is showing your bank branch, so you can see that there is some information which is non-IT concerning temperature, concerning the number of people who are entering and exiting the bank branch, as well as uh, important information, probably for the for the uh, the line of business manager here, on the IT status uh, of the most important aspects of his business. Let's move on to the next slide. So this is a presentation layer. As an on-premise solution, it's uh, it's offered with the uh, the current uh, with the version of uh, OMI that we'll be releasing in uh, HP Discover. That's the next version of OMI which will which will be required uh, to support this. Um, so the business value dashboard you can see here is capable of showing a geographical distribution of IT metrics, of IT status, of business metrics, and that's really the power of it. It's a loosely coupled way of presenting to board uh, teams, to IT executives, to combinations thereof. And you know the people who have been using this so far um, <coughs> excuse me, have um, already developed dashboards which have been very helpful then to them to show both their IT executives and their business executives what's happening and how things might not be due to any issues inside IT. Uh, or, or vice versa that are uh, due to issues in IT and make strategic decisions on what needs to be done to be able to govern use of satisfaction or business revenues. So if you're interested in this, it is something which is new. You can subscribe to it. Um, let's go to the next slide. You can subscribe to it today at uh, hp.com slash go slash bvd. Uh, and uh, when you go there and you register for that SAS beta, then you would be able to create your own dashboards using the examples that we provide and then pipe information to those dashboards. Let's go to the next slide, please. Uh, this one's just showing you an example and some of the highlights of what you can put in here. Uh, look at the bottom left hand side where we're showing an actual fight. We can also pipe non uh, business and non-IT information that we take from the internet, such as a streaming video, stream of a, I don't know, of a, a news release, uh, or even video cameras of the premises that someone's surveying using the business value dashboard. Okay, so let's move on. I think the next uh, section is uh, about the uh, automated IT reporting. So this is. Uh, uh, probably something you know, it's a, it's a tandem solution to OMI, uh, which is SHR Service Health Reporting and gives us a capability of de designing reports which bring together OMI events, OMI metrics, uh, and uh, metrics from other sources too uh, into across the main IT report, uh, which can be uh, generated automatically and distributed automatically to the appropriate people. Okay, so I think you're uh, hopefully up to date now on most of the aspects of what's new with OMI and the Opspring solution. Um, if you want to move on to the next slide, please. Then here's some of the benefits that people are measuring today. I mentioned this earlier on, 75% typical event volume reduction, 72 times faster triage is a use case that our own IT was able to identify, and I think we'd agree that's, that's a an enormous uh, improvement in uh, in uh, mean time to repair. Uh, customers who are improving their SLAs by as much as 90%, that's really important business contribution. Uh, the higher the SLA, of course, uh, the more often business users can exploit uh, the IT resources that are assigned to the services. And then savings, I mentioned 1.2 million earlier on, which is one customer. Here's another customer who's measuring for himself the kind of savings he's getting through the use of, uh, of OMI in his environment. Okay, let's move on uh, to the evolution program, which uh, I'm hoping most people are aware of. Uh, next slide, please. So the evolution program is built for the operations manager install base. Uh, and uh, here's some of the aspects that uh, we believe we're trying to address with the evolution program. Let's move on to the next slide so that we show people what kind of uh, aspects are built into this program. If you're a user of Operations Manager, 
or a performance insight or HP reporter, then you have entitlement to the operations bridge premium. Uh, the operations bridge premium is just a particular uh, version of everything I've shown you so far. So it's uh, service driven uh, with a single pane of glass and most of the things I've shown you. And the Alpha Bridge Ultimate, of course, is the one where we provide the analytics uh, driven aspects of uh, predictive analytics and uh, uh, log and automated log uh, and event analytics. So the evolution program is essentially allowing people to move from OM to Ops Bridge. Um, the entitlement is uh, indefinite, so people can install uh, the Ops Bridge licenses uh, to their data center and then work at their pace uh, to move uh, progressively from the operations manager implementation to the new operations bridge based implementation. And then later on, if they wish, upgrade to get the extra aspects of the analytics driven full solution. So that's the evolution program. Let's move on to the next slide. Uh, which is just pointing out some of the, the aspects that we believe uh, are uh, valuable to customers. As I mentioned, there's license entitlement, and that's indefinite. Your processes, which you probably developed based around what you were doing before with, uh, with OM and with uh, Performance Insight and Reporter, are going to be implementable using OMI. Uh, OMI. Uh, the collectors, whether they are agent-based or agentless, uh, are uh, are usable with IMI as well. So this is a non-disruptive entitlement, non-disruptive solution in most cases, uh, with just a few exceptions. We provide step-to-step -step guides, evolution tools. Uh, as I mentioned, you can do it at your own pace. And here's some of the comments back from uh, some of our customers who have done it already. Uh, G Money Bank was the first, I think, in the world to actually switch off OM. Uh, they completed their migration and they're, they're really delighted with the improved value that they're now getting uh, from Opsbridge. KMD uh, also progressed extremely well, very happy with the new dashboards which they are able to use uh, and find that uh, uh, OMI version 10 is, uh, is a really great way to improve operating capabilities of solving issues. Okay, let's move on to the next section which uh, oh, here's just some indications of value and some of the other customers who uh, who've adopted the Oxbridge solution. Okay, so the next section I think is, is Jay's testimonial. So I'm not sure if Jay is on the line. I don't see his name in the list of panelists here. Let's move on to the next section away from here. Next slide, please. Just showing you some of the solutions which people are using today with Operations Bridge. Uh, I mentioned Detect to Correct or Closed Loop Incident Process. Here's another one where people are able to automate the way in which uh, monitoring using OMI is set up for cloud services inside EC2, Azure. Uh, I think I mentioned it earlier on. Let's move on, please, to the next section. Um, Okay, it doesn't look like you've got Jay's slides in here, Rocky. No, I don't, Ian. Okay, um, is Jay on the line? I haven't no. seen him. No, I've, I've tried to reach him, but he's, uh, I don't get a reply, I'm sorry. Okay, um, I do have Jay's slide, so if it's valuable, I can walk people through them. I can, yeah. Yeah, if, yeah that'd be great. We can make you the presenter. And okay, we can go show ahead. your slides, and that way you can... Right. Uh, right. Okay, I'll make you a presenter. Thank you. Okay, so hopefully you can ah, see... Ah, great. I can see you. So Jay, Jay's a, a great advocate of uh, OMI 10. He's a member of the core infrastructure team at Bound City, which is Canada's largest credit union. Um, uh, he, is, he describes himself as a geek, so uh, he, uh, he often gets involved both in the production operations uh, systems at Bound City, but also as a technologist. Bound City, as I mentioned, is quite a large credit union in Canada, the biggest, in fact. 
and has, uh, as you can see here, a landscape ranging from uh, 467 moving to 1,000 servers plus as, they, as their business grows. They were users of Operations Manager. They've moved to the full Operations Bridge implementation, and he's now using OMI version 10 in, uh, in production. Um, he's a true bridge user. Uh, the notion of the Operations Bridge is vital to Jay, and if he was here to explain to you live himself how he is sitting on top of the uh, best bridge tools that he uses for his environments, such as Cisco, uh, such as uh, Microsoft SCOM for the Microsoft environment, and he brings events, metrics, and topology out of those tools into the, uh, into the operations bridge. Here's his uh, operations landscape. They're using uh, virtualization heavily. They're not using cloud too much at the moment, but they are using uh, virtualized environments. So it's very important for him to have the bridge where he can bring information out of those hypervisors. His core banking apps are mostly home, uh, home developed and home tailored. Um, and uh, you can see some of the tools that he's now using in the Operations Bridge uh, configuration. So he's got a lot of uh, HP tools providing uh, the data uh, sources into the Operations Bridge, such as NMI, as well as security tools, ArcSight. Uh, and site scope, but he's also bringing the information, as I mentioned, from the third party tools as well to the central console. And he's using a detect to correct a type setup where he's got uh, OMI integrated with his help desk using Service Manager. Um, their evolution to OMI 10 has been a lot faster than he expected. He loves the navigation, which is a lot, lot more streamlined inside of OMI version 10. I didn't mention that earlier on, but the product has been redesigned and re engineered. Uh, with OMI version 10.xx uh, and, and uh, Jay's pointing out here that he finds navigation to solve issues so much faster than it was previously for his operators. The dashboards are cleaner, they're easy to build and tailor. Uh, he likes the split that we've executed where OMI, OMI 10 doesn't need the BSM platform. Of course, it does obviously work with the BSM platform, uh, but it gives him that capex of flexibility to set up new operation systems much faster than uh, was uh, previously uh, possible with OMI embedded inside of BSM. He uses the UCMDB. He likes the Postgres SQL support, uh, which we have introduced with OMI version 10 as well. So they don't need necessarily to use legacy databases, which uh, translate to expensive licenses uh, and not always necessary um, uh, for uh, some of his installations, like new setups, which he can stand up in, a, in a, just a couple of hours. He's showing here some of the aspects of their service modeling. Uh, I can't replace him and to, to explain to you how this has been done, but you can see some of the aspects of how uh, the modeling that he's doing inside OMI 10 using UCMDB is vital uh, to his business. The aspects of being able to uh, get to control properly, business prioritization for his SLA uh, contract respect is, uh, is vital, and the aspects of product integrations too. Uh, the benefits he points out are here. So the single pane of glass, as you may expect, of the bridge is absolutely vital. And this is echoed by so many other people, uh, a great number of people now who are uh, telling us that uh, they can't build the picture without having a single pane of glass of what's happening uh, for prioritization, et cetera. Note that he also likes the monitoring automation capabilities that I mentioned earlier, the, the, the means to be able to ensure that everything is being managed, that nothing uh, is the thing is important to, to Jay. And they are expanding, they're uh, integrating uh, with uh, aspects of ZCOPS from VMware. Um, the SAN integration, you can read it for yourself here, and beginning to use the automated remediation we talked about earlier. So um, I'm sorry that they wasn't able to give you uh, that visibility himself uh, today. Um, so, with no further ado, Rocky, I'll open up for discussion uh, and questions. Okay. Hi, Ian. It's Mark. Um, I've got one question in the question box. I've got two questions now. I'll start with uh, question number one. Um, so, it says, does the operations agent need to be upgraded um, from 11xx? Okay, so Adam, Carol, and Volga would like to take that question. Yeah, um, um, I think if you are on a recent 11.x uh, version, then you don't have to upgrade. OMI can work with an agent 
12.12 or later, and um, you can configure uh, such an agent with monitoring automation inside OMI. Okay, thank you. Right, next question. Um, where do you need to be in the maturity scale in the use of an existing OMW or OM and the development of the event correlation uh, is operations analytics a prerequisite? Uh, you want to, I, I can give a quick. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so anyone else can can jump in, of course. But um, the the second part, um, and operations analytics is not a prerequisite. Uh, you can start at any point um, in the process that makes sense for your environment. That's the that's the easy part. Um, as far as the maturity uh, level is concerned, um, I think the as Ian was pointing out at the end there, the the key thing with um, with OMI as part of the solution is it is a single pane of glass and so even with OMI if you don't have that any level of maturity whatsoever that is a key thing for anybody it's the most common you know bring it all together and um, yeah and then work towards going from reactive to proactive to predictive uh, through the through that process but you can you can do the switch if you like at any stage Ian, you're still sharing your desktop. Um, maybe you can switch that off. Probably can, can I go back can to you, you for the... Yeah. Um, so the next the next question, um, possibly for Ian, is Van City using VPV um, or just VCOps and vCenter integration? Um, if Ian's not answering, then I've worked with Van City. I've been with them when we worked through the OMI ten deployment or initially, and they did not have VPV. Okay, so that's, uh, they're just using straight vCenter integration, presumably. Um, yeah, I don't know what they're doing right now. Um, it's been a few months since I have been there. Um, so as of this week, I have no idea. But, <laughs> but historically. I can tell you, yes, historically they, uh, uh, they had, before they went to OMI 10, they had uh, VSM 9 with you know, using BPM and OMW. Um, and on the BSM survey, they also had OMI, so that they were already using that. And then they um, basically moved their policy management or their monitoring across. Oh, they stood up OMI 10. They moved all their OMI, uh, sorry, all their OM uh, monitoring and agents to OMI 10. And then they uh, basically pointed their operators when they were happy with the, the GUI layouts. Um, pointed the operators or the users to the OMI 10 server uh, and integrated their BSM 9 um, server to the OMI server and of course any other um, integrations added into that. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, and they've got SiteScape obviously as well. <laughs> um, and uh, actually right now they're working on, they were integrating SiteScope into the BSM server or the APM server as we're calling it. Uh, but they're now um, switching that, uh, looking to switch that across, so that SiteScope is in a, integrated directly to OMI 10 uh, instead of the APM server. So they're taking the uh, what I would call the new architecture model, where BSM is almost a feed into the OMI um, solution. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. Sorry, I dropped. I, I lost my telephone connection. So my back. <laughs> um, so there's one here that says, "I'm evaluating OMI 10 now. Um, I want to be able to show some value to a couple of important stakeholders. I'm aware of management packs, but in order to say add like five clients, desktops, laptops, um, how can I get a nice picture quickly?"
Yeah, you know, let, let me try to tackle that, that one. Um, I think um, it's right, you want to just manage uh, five systems, five uh, desktop systems, um, and want to see them in your OMI system and how they be. Uh, yeah. um, if that's the scenario you're after, well, uh, typically the OMI, as with OM today, you would uh, begin managing them by installing agents on these systems. Um, or, of course, if you uh, want to use agent-less monitoring, you would use side scope. Uh, so that's what um, the two options that you have, right? And by installing agents on the systems, then afterwards you can deploy you know, the infrastructure management pack very quickly uh, using monitoring automation, and that will already give you some um, um, CIs in your RTSM. You will see the systems, and you will get um, events from the systems uh, talking about CPU load and disk load and so on. So I think that's uh, the fastest way to get started, install the agent and deploy the management packs, which can be easily done. And actually we have some videos on the live network that tell you how you install an agent connected to OMI and how you deploy the infrastructure management pack. I hope that's addressing your question. Um, thank you. Might... No. Carol, yeah. You know, I might add a little bit more, yeah, just in, just in case, I, mean, I just heard the term um, desktops, so I wondered if that meant running the GUI from the desktop as opposed to managing the, the desktop, if you know what I mean? I, I don't know from the question, I, yeah. it just, um, it, it's just a case of, I think they're trying to get um, some, some sort of dashboard to, right. to, be able to, to be able to show to the stakeholders, so right. uh, Eric, Eric says yes. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and so, right, um, so right now, I mean, two parts of that question, and the first one is just mechanically, the client desktop needs to have some plugins, Java and Flash, uh, for IE or Firefox, or, or um, sorry, or Safari on the Mac. And the um, actually, then then when they you know they have a login and so on, and they get permissions to see whatever they're allowed to see. Um, so, but on the on the back end, you you want to create a dashboard that's going to have some wow factor, <laughs> and <clears throat> and and how to do that quickly. So, depending on your audience, I mean, I tend to start showing the fairly high level view first, so something that gives me an overall perspective of the health of the environment before drilling down into the detail, and that. Very quickly could be something like a cape, like Ian showed a screenshot KPI over time, gives you that nice overall color, and you can do that for a business service, business application, or you know, in potentially individual servers if that's the level you want to look at. And um, the uh, you, one that doesn't require any work at all is the ROI statistics page. Uh, you just point, go to that page, and you see this is. Uh, you know, showing you the percentage of events that required no human intervention, um, so you can demonstrate that it's providing some value by automating, um, like, and correlating uh, the events going through. So it gives you the efficiencies and how you can improve on that over time, and perhaps measure that. You know, look at that before you to do too much correlation and automation, and then measure it again later and see, you know, how the two compare. Uh, and then the third one would be the monitoring dashboard. So within a workspace, and the workspaces are easy. And one of them is the monitoring dashboard, and it's easy to um, either modify an existing one or create a new one. And this just provides overall summarized health as well, so overall status based on an event filter or a view filter or a combination of the two. So you can get, here's my overall data center health, or here's my overall um, database health, or geographic based, or whatever it might be. Oh, and that's another example too. Perhaps if it's important to you to show a geographic map, um, there's a little bit more work involved in that because you need to map the CIs to a location, but it depends if that's an important thing for your environment. So they're just a few ideas to get started on components to use um, to create a, a single uh, workspace. But, uh, maybe, maybe if I can just add another uh, suggestion that may be of value, and that is the business value dashboard, which as I mentioned is an integral part of uh, IMI as we, as we bring the next version out. 
that HP did survey in London. The business value dashboard would allow you to develop a template that might be a classroom, bird's eye view, or it might be you know, some other kind of geographical representation uh, as well. So depending what the objective is here, is it to be able to show the points of sale or, or desktops used for, for university or something like that description. If you wanted to show status, then presumably the dependent data, data center resources which are supporting those uh, desktops or tablets or whatever, uh, those would be important IT status is to be showing to make sure that people uh, who are responsible for those resources can see whether the problem is with the desktop or whether it's with a, with a central resource. So I think you know, there's quite a few ways in which you can set up these kinds of dashboards, either native to OMI or taking information from OMI to the Business Valley dashboard. But there's quite a few ways that we that you could do that. Okay, thank you very much. Um, okay, I'll move on to the next one. Um, so the one from Suresh, uh, where can I find the architecture change between BSM 925 to the introduction of this OMI 10.1? Okay, I think that's one for for my specialists here. <laughs> I, don't know. I was going to say, I know I've seen it as part of partner slides and partner training. Right. I don't know how public that is at the moment, or how how wide it how widespread that is. So, immediate thing that comes to mind is the FAQ that we've got on the softwaresupport.hp.com site. I can get the direct URL, and that's really. If you know BSM 9.2x, it's an FAQ that goes through answers, obviously the most common questions, about the architectural changes. And that's got a reasonable amount of detail in it. Um, so I can provide that. I'm not sure. I can't, off the top of my head, I can't think of another resource that, uh, unless anyone else can. We, so, so so that we, that did, we did a four-hour session with Rocky, with Vivit. We did a four-hour session for architects. Uh, Rocky did... Do people have access to the content we use in that session? It, if it was done on on Vivit, it would have been should have been recorded. It would be on the Vivit um, forum. Well, it was a four-hour interactive session, so okay. I don't think it would have been recorded. But the, oh, okay. the the content that Carol used to explain some of the the differences and some of the aspects that she showed in that session, I was just wondering if that was captured and is published on the Vivit website at all. We will have a look. Yep. Okay. Yep. And what about live network? Well, well, current Carol is is something on live network. Um, I think not regarding the architecture. I mean, um, you know, there's a lot on live network, um, but we're not. We don't have a specific uh, presentation about the architecture changes right. on there. Yeah, it was so really just theory. yeah from so the, from the we, partner yeah from the partner side it was just a simple uh, two or three slides I think that just showed how BSM was moving from sort of the top of the tree to almost a data provider into the OMI um, and then that the split then between the BSM nine two five and the OMI ten I think was the, the the basically the way it was explained to us. Mm -hmm. right. And Ian, I can find that presentation and put it in the BSM SIG uh, directory of presentations. So we'll try to make okay. that available. Okay, good. There's yeah. quite a few and details. I think you went through Carol, right, in that session? See, I've even forgotten whatever the session was. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> it's all a blur. Um, but and it was in Las Vegas. <laughs> oh, that yeah. one. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, I was also thinking just to add on to the comment of just as a highlight of the architecture change. Um, you're right, you know, that the so-called split, if you know what I mean, the, um, uh, the, the future direction is for OMI to be its own um, software installation on its own platform. Um, we still have OMI included in BSM for the time being, but, the, but all our sort of focused development new things are really coming out on its own OMI 10 platform. Uh, but the other thing too is it's all about simplification. So OMI 10 doesn't have a metric channel in it. So if you point, if you want to have a, you know, there's no profile database, etc., and all of that is, you know, it's in your BSM server because that's very much metric driven historically anyway, uh, from way back you near know, the Topaz days and so on, and with 
BPM and RAM and you know, diagnostics and SAM with site scope and so on. <clears throat> uh, so that's, that's probably the other big change is the, the metric channel as well as that, um, that separation but with an integration between the two. And I think, I think again, as it was explained to us, it was, I think as you, you alluded to, it, it's going to allow the two products to evolve at slight, you know, they're, they're tied too, too tightly together um, at the moment, which is hindering yeah. the, the evolution, um, that, you know, so I think that was, that was again, it was, it was one of the ways it was explained to us, is that by separating them out, that will allow um, the two products to actually evolve at a, a different, different pace. Yeah, that's right. The, the in in pre right, they can each focus on this. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, uh, there's another one here from Suresh. Uh, what are the com what component level changes uh, would need to be made as part of an implementation? I'm not what sure I understand the question. I'm not sure I understand the question either. <laughs> Okay, so maybe Suresh is still around, so maybe he'll um, maybe can uh, can update the question. Um, right, one from Greg here. What kind of <laughs> an interesting one? What kind of horsepower do you need to have in the background to ensure good end user experience to run the interfaces? <laughs> um, I, 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 <laughs> I'd say the best. <laughs> Lots. Uh, it's a call, of course, it, it depends uh, <laughs> uh, question. Um, it depends of how much um, yeah, data you're dealing with, it, how, how many users you will have connected to these interfaces, um, how large is the environment that you want to manage, and, and um, then uh, depending on the size of your environment, you have to uh, yeah, bring in more ho horsepower uh, than for a smaller one. Right? Um, we can scale. Um, there are scaling options with additional gateway servers uh, that can then um, yeah, support more users. Um, of course, a higher CPU and, and memory uh, will also be required the larger your, the environment is. Uh, details uh, are in our um, yeah, deployment guides. Um, yeah, I think that's um, all I can say right now here on, on that level. I don't know if, uh, if Greg has access to the partner portal, but we have um, we have published the performance and the sizing guide for OMI 10 on the, on the partner portal, so you should be able to get some details from there. Okay, thank you. Um, right, a new, a new, new, taking it in a slightly different direction. Um, <laughs> this won't be one for you, Ian. Um, when migrating from OMU to OMI, um, where will I find the server-side message regrouping? You're right. <laughs> okay, so there are a couple of places you can do that. <laughs> um, and so, I mean, one of them would be and it's, it's event filter based, I should just start with that. So it's quite a simple way to you know, de define an event filter that says events that you know, match these attributes. Um, then they come into that, you know, go into being processed by that, um, that area of OMI. So there, there are different areas then within OMI. Um, one of them would be uh, through, for example, stream based event correlation. You could set up a repetition rule that just says and if you haven't <clears throat> if you haven't seen it, then stream-based event correlation is a little bit not the same, but it's conceptually a little bit like correlation composer um, in a in a simpler form. And um, you could create a repetition rule that just says minimum of one event matching this event filter, and then you can change any of the attributes, not just the message group, which is now called category, but you know, and and service name, <laughs> but you can change other attributes there as well. Uh, another place you could do it would be in the um, event pipeline. So there's an event processing customization area in OMI where you can, if you like to do Groovy scripting, um, which is basically based on Java, but you can do it, you know, and we provide samples, but you can create little Groovy scripts uh, to manipulate the events. And again, this is a little bit like a server MSI um, area, um, but it's 
but you configure it in the GUI. And <coughs> excuse me. And uh, you also define the order in which these scripts are executed. So you can have it again pass an event filter and then change any event attributes you want to um, within the Groovy script. There, are, there are two places you could do that. Okay, thank you, Roach. And a follow on, follow up one from Martin: Is the OMU notification interface still running? Uh, for example, the notification notification yeah. flag in OMI. Yeah. And <clears throat> um, so, I mean, the flag. Uh, if you were to forward an event from OMU to OMI, then yeah, with that flag set, then again, based on event filters, you'd have an event filter that looks for the that flag. Uh, or you can, I guess you can use it in OMI. <clears throat> but because it's based on an event filter, you can either base it on that flag or on other event attributes if you wish, so you don't have to set the flag. And, and you can define notification rules. So instead of just, you know, uh, let, me, let me start again. You can define notification rules, multiple of them in OMI. Uh, each rule is based on you know, an event filter, like I said and then you define the recipients for that rule um, and that might be like a, if it's email, it might be a distribution list or individual email addresses or whatever, uh, or you know, potentially SMS as well. Uh, but um, uh, then it's up to the recipients, uh, if they wish, to control the schedule. So they might say, at this time of day I want to receive an email, at that time of the day I want to receive an SMS. Um, so they, the recipients themselves, through the GUI, can control um, the time of day. Um, and the notification rule defines uh, which events, uh, what you want the output to look like, and who the recipients are that get it, and whether they're email or SMS. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I've lost some place in the list of... Uh, the list of questions here. Um, oh, Greg, Greg asked, uh, yes, I think we can probably do this. Uh, can we post a link to the OMI 10 sizing guide? So we can probably include that um, at the end. Is that, um, Ian, I'm, I presume that's okay? Yeah, if you, if you guys have got the list of everyone who's participating, then we can give it to you and you can blast it out to your members. Yep. Okay, perfect. Uh, a new one. Uh, can you can you talk about the um, the spy to uh, management pack migration, uh, especially around licensing? Okay. So in terms of licensing, then the entitlement program uh, is uh, is uh, give, provides the means for people to move from their existing spies to the management pack equivalent, uh, assuming that that is the case. Um, so that is part of the evolution program. So if someone signs up for the evolution program, is going to get that entitlement. Anything to add, Volker or um, No, I think from the licensing that uh, you explained it already. Uh, technically, um, we have a um, spy to management pack my, uh, evolution guide, which explains um, how you can. Um, move to the new management pack and keep your customizations that you might have done on the spy side. Uh, we are also working on a tool that will help you with that and, and show you, okay, um, and take your spy policies and, and convert them into management pack policies and keeping your customizations. And there's a follow-up one uh, along the same lines. Well, how about third-party spies? Um, presumably, some of the licensing will be negotiated with the third party, or are there some? Yeah, that is the, yeah, that is the case. Yeah, if, it, if it's not an HP spy, um, then um, the, the entitlement doesn't uh, doesn't kick in on that. Obviously, it requires some discussion with the third party in question. Yeah. Okay. And, and the migration of policies is that is the does the migration tool work with third party spies? Um, no, it doesn't. No. Okay. And that's the end of the questions. Um, so Rocky Eric says thank you very much. He says hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw that too. See, yeah, I, I want to. I want to thank all our UK panelists. I felt like I was in a James Bond movie, but uh, 
So <laughs> I want to thank everyone today. We had a lot of great questions, and if there's more questions that we didn't answer today, just just put it on the BSM SIG panel, and we'll we'll try to get to them or get the answers over to or the questions over to our our panelists for to answer them. But great session today. Thanks for the updates on the operations bridge component. And if there are any other questions uh, or presentations you would like to, to to learn more about for the next month call, we'll uh, just add that and we'll try to get the folks involved. So again, thanks everyone. Have a great day. Appreciate it. And Jake, Jay sent an apology. He had a, a, an emergency yes. at work, so he wasn't able to join us. Uh, no problem, you, Ian. You covered well. So okay. Well, great. Thanks, everyone. And Thank with you that, very much. we will conclude today's uh, 8 p.m. practitioner call.